everyone, welcome back to my channel, Sharon Cullen Art. Today is Tiny Tuesday Tutorial Day, and I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I put a sketchy circle down on my paper. I just went around it a few times and made it kind of uneven and sketchy. And I'm gonna go ahead in with my pencil and draw a landscape. Now last week I had left a message for you all to leave in the comments down below any ideas that you had for uh, a Tiny Tuesday tutorial, something that you'd like to see. Uh, and I'm trying to keep these beginner to intermediate. Right now I'm doing more beginner videos, but um, I will get more intermediate as time goes on. So I don't want anything too advanced for this. But if you have any ideas of things that you'd like me to paint and you'd like to see done so that you could paint along, then just leave me a message down below. Last week I got one response, so I don't think my message got out there well. I probably didn't articulate it very well. Um, so anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Now I'm going to go ahead and do another landscape today, and I hope you guys aren't getting sick of landscapes. Um, I just don't have a lot of time because Pat had his surgery last Monday. He's doing very well, but... Uh, I don't have a lot of time to be painting. In fact, this is the first time I've touched anything since last week when I did my last Tiny Tuesday tutorial. So, um, I'm just going to go ahead and draw this on. Hmm, I think I'll go like that. Make this come out a little bit. Maybe a knot. Okay, there's one side. I'm going to have a lot of brush down here. So I'm going to leave all of that open right now. I just wanted to get that tree in and we will go ahead and get started. Now I'm going to be using what colors? Uh, I think we'll go again with some Payne's Gray. I use Payne's, Pl Payne's Blue Gray. I'm sorry, I can't talk today either. And I want kind of an orangey yellow. So if you have a warm yellow, you can use that. I think I'm going to use my Aussie Red Gold. I'm going to need a lighter yellow as well. Something that isn't too cool. Oops, got my remote control on the floor. But not too warm. And then I think we should be set there. And then the rest will be either a brown or Payne's gray. <clears throat> nope, that's raw umber. Shoot, I can never find my burnt umber. There it is, it's in my reds, that's right. Okay, so those are the four colors I have. And I believe that's all we're gonna use and maybe a little bit of salt. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is grab a brush, uh, any size that you want to cover your circle with down to the ground area. I'm just going to go ahead and cover this so I can get my sky in the background. Brush is a little bit dirty, of course. See, I do that on purpose. <laughs> At least I'd like you to think so. Okay. <coughs> So now, I have not wet any of my paints, but I'm gonna go in. I want this gray to be kind of on the lighter side. I'm gonna go in a little bit dark at the bottom. And then let it work its way, whoops, work its way up. It doesn't really matter if that's there or not. I think I'm going to grab a little bit of pink too because I don't want my sky to turn green and with my gray meets my yellow it's going to turn a bit greenish so I'm going to grab some quinacridone rose and just barely get a little bit of color on that and I still want a little more gray down in here 
got too much water. That's why I'm lifting that back up again. I gotta grab more gray, mix it up, and then put it down again. There we go. And then a little more pink again. I want it to be very grayed down. I don't want it to be super duper pink. You could do it however you want. Now I'm just gonna tip my paper upside down and kind of let that run upwards a little bit. Not too far, but a little bit. And then I'm gonna take my yellow. Actually, no, I'm gonna still use some gray here. I wanna put a little gray at the top, kind of like clouds. There. And then I'm going to take my warmer yellow. I do want to clean this area out too for the sun. There we go. And then I'm just going to start dropping in the yellow. And then around this sunny spot, I wanted it to be a little bit brighter yellow. I need something round, actually a round pencil tip like this would be good. And what I'm going to do is just take my paper towel. I need a drier one, though. My paper towel, and I'm going to wrap it around my pencil top like that. And then make it a sunshine. Whoops, except you're not supposed to touch the edges of the paper. I'm trying to hurry, you guys, and I shouldn't be. I'm so sorry. I apologize. There. That's better. And I'm going to go back in with that yellow again. Try to brighten it up around the sun. Okay, I lost some of my white in the drying process. But no worries because we can go ahead and add that back with our um, white gouache. And then I also got some areas outside the line here. So, worst comes to worst, I will just make that a little bit bigger. Or you can try putting a little white gouache over it, but usually that shows. We'll see what I, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Now, I want to go ahead in with some of my darker color. I'm going to mix some Payne's Gray and Burnt Umber together. I want a hint of brown, but I don't want the tree to be brown because everything's backlit from the sun. So when you're looking into the sun, everything turns darker. And I don't want to um, make this tree brown like this or it's just not gonna, it's not gonna look right if it's brown. So we're gonna add a little gray to it and just brown that gray down. I apologize for being off frame for so long. I guess I'm out of practice, you guys. <laughs> Uh, forgive me for this, but I'm only leaving this on here so that you can hear the next steps that we're going to be doing. And then I'm going to realize that I'm off the frame and I will be pushing it back in frame again. Again, I, I'm sorry. The only thing you're missing here is me painting in a tree. And you'll see that there in just a minute. Now, uh, I want to go ahead with the bottom. And what I'm going to do on the bottom is I'm going to mix a little bit of brown and gray. Mix it in my palette first, uh, or on my mixing tray first. Let me get a little gray down. And then I want to get a little bit of brown down. A separate spot here, a separate well. And 
got an area that's going to get a little bit lighter. I'm just trying to decide how I'm going to do that. So I'm sorry, I'm off frame. What I'm going to do here is try to keep this a little bit lighter gray and then go in with some darker color. So my first time, I'm just going to take my gray and go over this whole area. Go over everything with a lighter color. Doesn't matter if your brush is dirty or whatever. And I'm going to take some of my gray. Cover this whole area. Then a little bit of the brown too I want over here. Just dot it in at the bottom. A little more gray on the bottom portion. Want that to be a little darker because this is where we're going to add our salt. So I want to get these colors down early while this paper is nice and wet and then it has time to dry. And the darker the color, the more dramatic that salt effect will be. Brown, burnt umber usually picks up very well. And the gray will pick up a little bit. So now I'm going to go ahead and get my salt down so this can suck back again. It's bleeding right now. And try to get it only on this brown and gray portion. It's the only place you want it. Well, you could do whatever you want, really. But that's where I'm putting it. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead, and we have to let that dry naturally. And in the meantime, I want you to find one of your smallest brushes, maybe your rigger. We're going to be putting in some um, brush up here. And we're going to do that with that brown-gray mixture, or you can use just gray, whatever you want to use. I think I'll just darken this up. I think I'm going to want to darken this tree up, too. It's just too light. So I'm going to go ahead back in and lighten it a little bit, or darken it a little bit. You know what I mean. Boy, you guys, I am so tired. I am exhausted. <laughs> I apologize. This is just not my best time. And I really was dreading doing this video, too, to be honest. Nothing against you guys, really. I'm just so busy helping Pat with after his surgery. He's doing excellent. Excellent. He's already at 100. Within three days post-op, he was, oh, let's see, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, four days post-op, he was already flexing his knee at 110 degrees. So past the 90-degree mark. He was, he was doing great. That is unheard of. As a nurse who did many, many, many years with these orthopedic patients, um, I can tell you that that is, like, amazing. So he's doing great, but he's in a lot of pain because he's pushing himself so hard to try to make sure he's using his leg correctly, you know. And he's doing well, and he's already on a cane. He started on a cane by day six. Can you believe that? craziness there we go that kind of leaves that looking like a path hopefully it won't close in too much may have made a big mistake okay now I don't want to use this brush anymore that's too big I'm going to my rigger actually I'm going to go to my zero and I'm just going to add in some kind of thick brush over here. This is going to be the trunks. And I want them kind of doing whatever the heck they want to do. Jagged is better. Okay. And then I'm going to go switch over to my rigger. And I want to get this even thinner. Or if you struggle with that or you don't have a rigger, just use a micron pen. Or something and you can do it that way and I'm just gonna go ahead in I'll try to zoom in a little bit but you guys know how I lose you let me tip this Let's see are we focused I hope so can't tell 
I'm blind. I need to get an eye appointment. If you struggle with branches, do whatever works for you. Some people like to come inward toward the trunk. I just have a harder time with that because I like to lift as I'm going so that the tips get as thin as possible. You might even try going this way, upside down. I've never tried that, but let's see if that works easier. Dragging toward you. Yeah, actually, that makes it nice and easy. So you could do something like that. I once received a comment from somebody saying, you're not supposed to turn your paper upside down. You're supposed to keep it straight all the time. Well, I can see where somebody in a classroom setting might say you should learn to work with your canvas up and down or whatever. But, um, you know, when you're in the privacy of your own studio, it's whatever gets the job done, right? So, you do whatever. You do you, boo, as they say. I'm going to get this thicker down here. It just kind of want it to be thick and disappearing almost like all these branches are coming together just like that there we go and then a little bit over here in the distance doesn't have to be as big a bush but just something that indicates there's more growth over here And then maybe some twigs, grasses, whatever. Going up like this. And a little bit up over here. Try not to dip into your salt, but if you can help it. There we go. And then we need to put our branches on our tree. <clears throat> now you can do that again with your rigger or whatever. I want to start with some thicker branches before I go thin. So I'm just going to press a little heavier with my rigger here. I'm almost flattening it down to the page as you see. I just want something coming back this way a little bit even. Oops, that one went over the edge of my circle. Okay, and now if you want to get even thinner and you're struggling, you can try your micron pen. See if that'll help you and you can go even thinner like this. Whatever you want to do. Just show you all the different ways you can do it. This kind of looks kind of Halloweenish too. So I had a lot of people say, "Oh, it reminds me of Halloween last week on the painting I did. What did I do? Oh, I did this one, the one with the tree last week. Um, if you didn't do it, I can post it at the end of the video. Uh, a lot of people said that they thought that it reminded them of Halloween. So I'll be doing some Halloween themed things coming up and we'll be doing more fall and I promise I will get to the birds. Actually, probably after Halloween, I will do birds. I'll have a lot more time then, sort of, then I've got eight birthdays in my family, but well, not anymore. My mom is gone. So seven I like wiggling these branches and making them kind of funky looking. It's very easy to do with a micron pen, although you can do it with a, with a um, rigger too. You have to have a really fine rigger and a very light hand, but you can do that. How many of you guys are doing Inktober? I haven't decided. I know if I don't do it, I'm going to feel guilty about it. 
And if I do it, I'm going to feel stressed about it. So I don't know. I'm adding more of these grasses with my micron too, just to add a little more darkness in, a little more depth. And then the same with this bush. I'm going to go over it again. My, my um, watercolor was not dark enough for that. So I want to leave some of the lightness up above on that grass and then leave some of it darker. So it's getting catching some of the light. <sighs> Trying to miss my my salt here so I don't ruin my pen. Okay, now we just got to wait for that salt to finish drying and then we'll take off the salt and see how it looks. Don't dry it with a blow dryer though because that will change the process of how much uh, paint is absorbed and you do want the paint absorbed. So, And I think I'm just going to go around this a little bit with my pen and make this more sketchy. That way it kind of covers up my errors. While this is drying, um, and I hope I wasn't off screen for all of this, I'm going to have to repaint the whole thing. While that painting is drying, I thought I'd bring up my journaling. Somebody had talked to me about on Instagram, actually a few of you had talked to me about wanting me to do some of my journaling on the channel so that you could see me, how I work at it and everything. This was just a practice painting I did before I had to do a... Um, a um, commission for somebody and this was nothing like the painting I was just playing with water but then I laminated it I didn't want to keep it to frame it or anything because it was just a study but uh, anyway this is how I start my book I always start the beginning by putting my first date down sometimes I use a quote this time I chose not to use a quote it's a good way of starting a new book when you don't want to get your new books dirty I know I understand that with beginners that's a huge issue I used to have the same issue but my attitude toward a sketchbook is that your book is only as good as what's inside. If you put nothing in it, then it's just paper. So put something in your books. They don't need to be seen by anybody else. It's like having a diary. So this is how I journal. And I'll add things about my day, like this day was a windy day. Um, so I put some of the waves down. And then I put a, a tree in the wind and put windy, you know, things like that. And then I just started writing about it. And then I had been working on unpacking some boxes and found my mother's china and was all excited about it. And so I drew some pictures of her china. And um, that's basically what I do. This one was uh, about the acorns falling they were starting to fall and they were falling on my roof and they were getting really loud the squirrels pick them off the branches and then they throw them to the ground and it sounds like a firing squad when you're in my studio with a metal roof so um dad wrote about the the acorns and then my plants having to do repotting and that kind of thing which still took me a month to get to but I finally did it and now I think I need to repot it again because I didn't use the correct soil but this is basically how I do my journaling now if you'd like me to do this I can do this on my channel in fact I was considering doing it now a while back also you guys had asked me to go over my Zinnia app, but it's an app that, I'm sorry, I bumped my camera again. It's an app that that costs like $45 a year for digital journaling. And then I found Good Notes, and that you can pay $8 for one time and you're all set. And basically you can make your own journals, you can purchase digital journals, and then basically I do the same thing. Like there's a picture of the commission painting, and then a trifle that I had to make. Um, this day I did a lot of drawing and stuff and then added some things at the bottom. You can go on Pinterest and download stickers to put in your books. 
Um, this was from Doodle Wash. <laughs> And I just was talking about my painting and then Labor Day and all sorts of stuff that you can do. Um, my to-do lists and <clears throat> things like that. So basically, um, that's that's how I journal with this. And um, a little more drawing and stuff. That's an old, that was an old Inktober angel that I did a few years ago that I put in there and then my tiny Tuesday tutorial stuff like that and I just put it all in here and I was working on a whoops I was working on a family tree so I've got a mess in here for that that I have to get to my son's girlfriend but um, you can get weekly planners to put in there all sorts of stuff so anyway I do that too and um, making my kombucha I posted that on on uh, Instagram and also you guys I got the Graphitint paints and I'm going to be painting with the Graphitint paints as well I'll have another video coming up on that but if you want me to do my digital journey journaling as well I can add those in from time to time and show you how I do my di digital journaling I do digital journaling every day this journaling I have not gotten to since when August something and September is almost over, August 31st. So it's been three weeks since I've done anything in this. But like I said, we were getting ready for Pat's surgery. Then his surgery happened last week and things have just slowed way down. But if you'd like me to do those things, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more of that. And um, are we dry here? Yeah, it looks like we're finally dry. Whoops. Mostly kind of finely dry. Now I'm going to take my dryer to it just to finish it off so that I don't smear it. There we go. That's dry. There. And then you get some texture to your painting. I don't know if you can see that there. There's a lot of texture in there. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's all I was going to do for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope it wasn't too skimpy or simple for you. People like to have these short and sweet so that they can do something very quickly. And I like that too. Although I hate the pressure of a certain day. <laughs> because I don't always feel good or whatever. So go ahead, of course, and sign your work. I'm just going to do it really lightly over here there you can hardly even see it and that is this week's tiny tuesday tutorial so everybody remember be courageous paint with wild abandon and most of all be kind to each other take care everybody and have a great week i promise i will be getting more videos up very soon once pat gets back on his feet Take care. God bless you. Bye-bye.